Hello and welcome to the Epic Cup here in the Heroes Lounge. I'm not, a go not alone, I'm joined by Ashin the Rai today. Good morning everyone, or oh, afternoon, depending on where you are. If you just woke up or not. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be your casters for the first three games on here, the main channel. Meanwhile we have Karis and Yosh casting the second channel. Oh, and announcing you can see which games. And we also have a German stream with Beethoven. So make sure to check this one out as well, if you're a German. And we have already the maps chosen. Yeah, so just having a quick look in the bands as well. So we had a uh, Dragonshire, uh, Infernal, BOE and Tomb banned out immediately. Already, uh, Gaming the Rhythm banning Infernal and Tomb, and um, that's leaving AF AFK for Kakoa banning uh, Dragonshire and BOE. Volskaya looks like it was the pick for Kakoa, so big map normally runs uh, a bit longer than all the other ones, so should be interesting. Uh, it looks like the teams are just about ready. I think we're just finalizing everything at the moment. Looks like it. Uh, yeah, so Gaming the Rhythm as well finished uh, top of Division 4, um, 10 out of 10, and I think they only lost two maps in the entire season. Very, very strong team. Um, we did play against them in our last match. Um, one close game, one not so close game. They're a very strong team, uh, I know from personal experience. And uh, Kakao uh, finishing fifth in division four i think our team did play against them but i don't think i was what wait why is it 50 zero it's not no it's it not what? true it's not true 15 <laughs> zero oh i can't even see the uh <laughs> it put fk for coco in 15 map points so far <laughs> um no yeah i was i also played fk for coca in the cocoa in the group phase now I was sadly missing due to casting the rare cut, but we would have needed one map, but they, they securely took two maps of us, so... I'm interested in how they will play. First of all, we've got a Junkrat ban from gaming in the rhythm. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, a good solid ban. Um, Junkrat, very very strong at the moment, especially with his trap build. Um, become quite prevalent. Uh, Alarak ban, not surprising. He's just very, very strong at the moment. Seems to be banned out in almost every game. Uh, at least that I play in at the moment. So good Alarak players can just make or break any game. That is true. Now we've got the next ban from Gaming in the Room. Also keep in mind, Gaming in the Room has only a roster of three players. So they're playing with at least two subs right now. Which could result in a bit of the team not playing together as well as they used to. First of all, we've got them banning up the Blaze. See, Blaze is still quite strong. I mean, you've got um, Combustion seems to be the current go-to, but Bunker Bunker is still really strong depending on the enemy comp and uh, a very solid offlaner as well. Um, the stuns to follow. Uh, he's just got so much in his kit. And uh, the Unstoppable, once the quest is completed for two seconds, really good. Lunara Band does not surprise me. I think it's uh, Franjo Trenk. Uh, is the AA player for Gaming the Rhythm. Uh, very, very strong Lunara, one of their uh, top picked heroes um, throughout the normal season. Also, uh, as you see, there is a betting setup, so explanation mark bet A if you think AFK for Kokoa will win this, or, a, or explanation mark bet B if you think Gaming in the Rhythm will win this. Savannah's yeah, first pick. Yeah, that's a surprise not not opting for the tank straight away, but Sylvanas, um, you know, Black Arrows and, you know, depending on whether or not she goes for stacking or just a full Q, uh, can be really strong, especially on that objective. Get those stacks in or just burn down someone oh, straight away. Uh, Johanna taken up of AFK with the Rhaegar, two very strong picks. Johanna, not really a tank you can counter too much uh, to be taken early, plus allowing, allowing you to really get... Um, those other team mem uh, team characters just like grouped up for any kind of burst and assisting in the rotations. Yeah, especially to go with Rega, there is a lot of risk already on the side on the, of AFK for Kokoa. 
Gaming in the Rhythm. Now, after Sylvanas, they decide to go for Malganis and Stukov. Malganis need, they need to feed, apparently. With Stukov getting the silence in. Very strong idea they have. To sleep into the silence, pro probably. Especially when Stukov yeah. hits level 13 and he chooses to go for the route. Yeah, the Verluent reaction. Um, I mean, that's just one target dead straight away. I like that setup there. Just burning down like one, potentially two targets. Potentially even going for a mage to follow that up, but we'll see. Yeah, talking uh, about burning have... a target, all the tech heroes are very strong, and we see Sol Jin and Reyna being banned out now from those two teams. Yeah, Sol Jin with his uh, infinite quest um, can be good depending on how late the game goes, and uh, Jimmy just strong in general. Fostered for all the next two picks for FK for Coco. So getting the Fostered in Ethic Global, even though. Keep in mind, Muska is not the biggest map, so it is not so so important to get it. You still have nice in rotations. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it gives you the option as well, because Thrall might go into the Crash Lightning, and they might just kind of like swap the offlane. Um, with Falstad having bribe as well, it will allow them to get the camps, uh, like the turrets, mainly, a lot faster. KTC coming in here from front of the spicy. And uh, Malganis Sleep's just going to allow that uh, KTZ to stack very, very quickly. And Leo in the offlane is very strong. He might struggle a bit with Falstad and Thrall, so we will need to be careful. But uh, we'll see what the last pick is going to be now for AFK. Ming Lee. So. That's crazy I'm a bit unsure about the Ming, to be honest, um, because you don't really have as much setup with the Johanna, so it's just a uh, like a micro stun being brought in. But uh, we'll wait and see. Say good Ming combos on this, just be able to delete a target straight away. Yeah, I think so far gaming in the rhythm has a bit of a better draft. I just don't see any of control in it. The team of FK for Kakoa against the Maganis. Maganis just wants to go into your team and be annoying to you. Mm. So they've only got, um, say, two stuns, uh, well, one root, uh, one micro stun to really help kind of like delay that uh, Malganis. They need to be really careful on their rotations mid top, unless they opt for like a 1 1 3 or a, uh, a 1 3 1 in there, because Malganis will be going through with KTZ looking to get those stacks in. Looking at G or Huffed. Gaming in the room, his most played tanks are Johanna, ETC, and Blaze. Not surprising that we saw the place ban. There was from their team, not from the others, so interesting. But still, very strong heroes, and if he can play Morganis very well, then it's just going to be very annoying for the side of AFK for Kokoa. Yeah. And uh, if they can just go past Johanna and get onto that back line. Um, Kakoa might might struggle just to get that damage out and get that first reset. Um, but KTZ will need to stack on this. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if Sylvanas goes Q build rather than W, just to give them a bit more early game um, strength in the team fights until KTZ stacks up. But we will see. We will see. Let's start with the left side. We've got FK for Kokoa. We've got Linux playing the Falstad. Jimek on the Jaina. Puppet Fresh on the Li Ming. Race on the Reg. And last but not least, we've got Tis Leaf on the Thrall. Yeah, and on the right team, the Blues, we have Haft on Malganis. Uh, Draxteer on Stukov. Fawcett on Lyric. Franjo Trenk on KTZ. And Gvoth on Sylvanus. I hope I pronounced that right. And they're off. Looking uh, off at lane is going talons. straight to lane. Yeah, apparently. Looking at the Talons, we've got pretty standard. We see Wolfron, so it just got buffed with the basic attack against you with the basic attack against Hero, reducing cooldown. It was an own talent, but with two seconds I think. Yeah. One second. And Malganis going straight in. Chain misses there from KTC, interesting. He tries to use it on not a sleeping target. Yeah, and uh, KTC's opted for uh, Q. 
on there. And, but the rotation's coming out very strong from the blue team. Nice interrupt there from Johanna as well. Chain out. It's first stack on KTZ. Brawl now in. Leo no, Leo in the mid lane. Dropping very low, but he's able to Wraith walk out of there. Now, I like how Kakura have set up here. Very aggressive to start with. I mean, there is no bribe on the Falstad, so he's just going to be looking to stack on those minions. It's also right and, now uh, on the Seas Markman, so he's going for an Aura Tech turn. We also see both teams just taking their turret, as it is used to do. Or as you should do on this map. All about item control here. And uh, we see a bit of an ambitious play there with a. Uh, the healing item looking to be taken doesn't look like it's been sniffed and they're just applying a pressure to the mid lane i really like that counter play but i do think the better value went over to gaming in the rhythm there with that healing item i think so too i think if k for kokoa could have like pushed bit in mid lane a bit just throw someone in to to just look on the camp see how far they are They got nice the first tower, so they have a there. bit of an experienced lead so far. Both teams hitting level 4 nearly at the same time. See the triumph rate from the Li Ming, so getting the cool reduction in on the orb. Yep, and uh, at the bot lane, uh, it's about what you'd expect. Thralls doing okay, stacking his uh, blue lightning. Uh, Normally you'd see here maybe a bit more because you'd want it uh, fully stacked for the first objective about three, three and a bit minutes is what you'd expect but still doing quite well. Leo's looking to move around just to uh, scout out the area initially. Uh, camp's almost taken a bit of better timing on the red team so they're going to wait for that next wave to come in and the objective to start just to give them that extra pressure at the top. I like how the reds are setting up though on the point. Just uh, Malganis at the front, looking to get a sleep out. There's the Big chain game. against Fena and Rega. But How KDC going down. Far, though. Great flank there, really, really good. KDC was too far out, trying to get his chain onto Joanna and the combo in to get some stacks. Results him in going down. Yeah, and the uh, camp's still waiting. Now only just taken now, Sylvanas clearing up the top. And a uh, turret should be coming back online very soon. We'll see how they react to that. Seven's almost there for both teams. 15 as well. and 10 seconds right now in the fortification camps. This turret. Just looking at the talents, we see from Maganis 25 armor for one more second instead of going for the fifth armor. Oh, that's big on the main. Oh, the chain misses. Infight coming out. Look of dropping very low. That's the healing pulse. Coming. Turret. Out. turret. Islands. the combo from Kitsi misses again with the red team staying very strong on the point and blue team are just backing out looking for a tap and to reset sevens here now for both teams pretty much what you'd expect that was the advantage of the healing pulse we saw there just by putting it down you had those extra sustain yeah and the uh, merc queen on uh, sylvanus assisting with the turrets just making them deal that extra bit more damage which is really useful Especially on this map. Next turret picked up for red team. And they're on their chain misses. Sleep is out. Keep coming and in. Malganis might fall. And it's very low, but it seems to there. escape. Turret going down as well for the red team. It seems like they're getting them low, but not quite there. Quite available to finish them yet. Jenna now coming in again. Can you see just tap? And Falstad with the flank onto the Malganis. Leo getting low Keep as well. Down. Leo falling. Resets coming out. Malganis falling as well. That's two kills. That's maybe a third. Brand new. Taking a lot of damage. And that is the third kill. The objective will go over to the blue team. Now the front wall has been opened here. So are they just going to take the well and the structure or just move straight to top? It looks Falstad. like they're moving Wait. straight towards the top. So you always like to see this is having the wave getting ready to be prepped just to get that extra damage from the archer minions because they do hurt and all that bonus damage to structures really does add up over time. 
front wall almost down, Sylvanas putting out a lot of damage onto that protector. Another stack on KTZ, bring him to 14, he will have that chain very soon. This will give him the ice spike as soon as he hits it. Mm. Oh, no, not yet. So the protector got all he wanted in the top with the fountain, and now he's going towards the mid lane to look for that fountain. Yep, starting on the fort though. Um. There we go, that extra damage is coming out. There's the spike. Big pull on to the false sad. Big cleanse. Yeah, could have been a dead bird there. Uh, cleanse very, very good, and the uh, silence there was ready. Uh, maybe a bit too late, but the uh, cleanse would have allowed him to get out anyway. Straight onto the healing item as well. I like this, keeping the pressure up while they have the 10, as they're not going to have it for long. FK for Coca with level 10, as you said, now took the support camp and looking at their level 10s. Pretty usual with the Wave of Force, Ancestral Healing, Thundering, Mighty Gust, and Blessed Shield. So I think uh, with AFK. The way they've been setting up on fights, uh, the flanking seems to be really strong, so that Sunder is going to do so much work. And the Gust just splitting the team in two. So it is something they need to watch out for. Uh, 10's now picked up for the red team. Everything that you'd expect on here, nothing really varying. The uh, arrow could do some quite a lot of work though with the right setup. Malganis now having an extra tool to stay alive in there, and uh, into just to split teams up. They do have a lot of mobility though, the uh, uh, blue team with uh, Falstad, Dash and Ming teleport, so they need to be really careful on which targets they do pick. I mean, a good There's thing on it. Oh wait, we have an engage onto the bot lane. We're all taking a lot of damage. Rega may need to drop the healing pulse as he's now in a very bad spot as well. Dodges the silent arrow there, but he's still taking a lot of damage. Oh, they jump. And race. MLG jumped there from him and he's looking to escape. No, there's uh, the oh. slow. Ancestral. He's looking to save the healing. Oh, and our side set. the Dukes on Dukes. And they keep the item going. All through that time as well, Falstad and Johanna were just confirming mid and then Falstad moved to top to get a bit more damage. Um, I think that went really well for the uh, blue team. A lot of chase and a lot of uh, heroes committed in that to confirm the Rhaegar yes. kill. Rhaegar healing item sidestep god. Can we call him this way now, please? Sidestep god as he just sidestep KTC like two times there. Zigzag, zigzag king. Well, we have level tens as well for gaming in the rhythm. The usual with the Karen swarm, massive chef, tomb, uh, shadow fisher. Yeah, and the waiting arrow as you said before as well. They have yeah, now uh, cooldowns. Yeah. They have cooldowns for now. And China now being engaged on, but there's the gust to save her in a 1v4. Yeah, which, uh, considering the value that uh, the blue team have got top, uh, I'd say that's quite a nice trade. Uh, it will be back for some point during the objective, as it does last for quite a while. Uh, Johanna full resets, and uh, Falstad showing what uh, how useful that global can be there. Having two offlaners here, just being able to uh, control all that experience. The uh, they have nearly a level, just over level actually here. But it's not only the soaking on the overlane, He's just always able to just come into the fight immediately. Oh, but wait, he oh. cannot if he's dead, as he's getting combat here and falls. Okay, we'll gaming in the room. We'll go over. Gaming in the room. One person advantage. Looking at support camp, and they will go for it. Taking the heaving item in the meanwhile, Rega on the point holding it so far. Leaving it just to be safe. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate because I mean, they did all go missing, and uh, it's a great flank from the Malganis, but uh, Falstad should have been thinking a bit more. There were no minions left in that lane for him to soak. I think he should have just backed off a bit earlier. Uh, but it looks like the pressure is being applied now at the top, which is what Sylvanas will give you. Sylvanas eating Falstad a min combo. Pressure. Oh, there's the combo. Oh, against yeah, Dragon and Foster. Stukov got they get low. saved. For all the first one to fall here, Karen Storm coming out. Healing pulls also used for FK for Kokoa. 
Now, Janet, very bit spot, and she goes down as well. There's two kills for gaming in the rhythm, but also Scoop oh, coming low. They had a straight. The postals. So we have Leo back to lane showing, um, which means it's uh, 3v4 at top. Uh, everyone a bit low. Looks like uh, just starting to get healed up now. Rhaegar doing it a bit faster than Stukov. But now all, almost back to full health. Troll now respawning on his way. Ming just throwing some orbs out there, hoping to get in a bit of damage. Malkan is asleep, just a retreat. Leo rotating up now as well. This seems like the objective is, though, going over to the red team. Yes, it does. Can you see Malkan is in case he's not able to stack? He only misses three stacks, though, so. Not far away. So looking at Leo, yeah, he does we... have uh, his buyback quest completed now, so we'll be healing off a uh, damage dealt. Also, looking at Leo, we see Spectral Leech on level 13, so he's maybe opting towards an auto tech build rather than the usual Wraith Walk damage reduced stuff. Mm. So, he might just be looking for a bit more survivability there. I mean, I still would have thought the uh, damage reduction would have been better. But he might be looking to uh, spend less time in Wraith form uh, based on how the team set, uh, team fights are going with them planking so hard a lot of the time. Bottom well has fallen though. Will they get more from bottom? They still have Sylvanas trait. Back to taking a lot of damage seems like to be focused down before the timer expires. Falstad moving around though, he might be looking for the gust. Looks like Leo's left. Oh, Looks like they're Gone backing out, they, they don't want uh, any part of this anymore. But a lot of value gained bottom. No well, uh, fought about two thirds health. Uh, a single push in that one will confirm, especially with Sylvanas. And the turret being taken up, very good. You want to be grabbing those on cooldown whenever you can. Morgan is engaging onto Jenna there, but she's able to pop down skin before the sleep hits her. Also looking at Falsehood, we see an auto tech build coming in from him, a full auto tech build. Except for the boomerang on level 7, it, not a secret weapon. You see the support camp is about to be taken now from gaming in the room. Jenna there solo so far. Gust would be up, so Falsehood if there's in. No, they're gonna try and push bottom for now to maybe get this found down as the opponent's got theirs already. Mm. And it looks like uh, Sylvanas as well being a bit late to join Leo still at the top. Yeah, and this fountain goes down also before taking half of its damage, so... If k Coca-Cola looking very good if we take a look on the... on the forts and stuff. Combo coming out there from KTC, I'm only missing one stack so far. As soon as he gets this one, he will get the spell spike. power. Yeah, the, um... <clears throat> Uh, the death and the K build uh, fall there will be putting out so much damage. Um, Especially with this cool and reduce coming in. Mm, with a shade of Naxxramas at 20, that's going to be so, so much damage. Even to Johanna, like, we'll just get melted and the armor reduction from the uh, Shadow Dagger. Oh, Root coming uh, in from Stukov the there. No Iron Skin no iron just skin. yet, and goodbye, Johanna. And KTC just finishes his quest as well, so he gets those spell power. Yeah, it's a bit mad to think that for the entire game now, he's been on a 70% less spell power. So uh, that could really do even more work uh, in the later game. And bottom's being confirmed as well, that's the full structure down. Oh, is there a flank here being set up? Yeah, looking for it, among us coming in with this leap, hitting Li Ming. There's the combo. Oh no, there's a nice cleanse coming in from Rega. She keep her alive, also ancestral. Falsehood coming in with the gas to save everyone. Two big cooldowns used there that will not be available for the next fight, and uh, Leo pushing in top still, trying to get that 20 as soon as possible. A couple of waves mid. Might be there for when the uh, protector comes in. Should be there by the time the protector comes in and the front wall goes, but uh, we'll see how they prioritize that. Their turret is available now as well. We'll see if they move. Jenna back now, they're pushing in at the bottom. Gaming in the river, taking away this fortification camp. 
as there's no incest and no gust for the side of FK Pokemon Koa. It looks like they're quite happy here to sit out until 20. But also I have to keep in Falstad. mind, if K for Coco is not too far away from 20 themselves. Yeah, Faust had double soaking there. Uh, I don't think they'll commit to uh, going for full pick, but uh, they are looking to get some points on the board straight away. Pretty with Wolf Run, Rega is able to escape in those moments. He's as fast as someone as a mounted player. And this is our zigzag Rhaegar King, who can just dodge everything it seems. Yeah. Just about to see him dodging, I don't know, Wailing Arrow in Tomb. As if shot for such. For such. 20 almost around the corner for both teams now. Faustad flying in. in. Force of 5v4. Oh, not big rude! And Huge Kate. blow up. Malganis going down now. Stukov in not a good spot and he has still the healing item. And this will be dead Stukov. Yeah, it's two good kills for AFK for Kokoa. And they really uh, need it for them. Malganis not even getting the chance to get the carrion swarm off. Instantly blown up. Big Rude there from Thrall, so he cannot dodge any skill shots. And then there was just a faucet coming on with giant kill and Ming hit all her stuff on him. It was a good bite into Malganis, but looking. Those two teams, we have both hitting level 20 right now. These us with a bigger wave of force, storm shield from the reg as well. Nexus Frenzy from Faustad with his auto tech build frog going for the blink. Jana taking the old upgrade to get everyone with everyone caught within yeah, range. I mean, two I'm, seconds. I'm from Johanna. Also, two seconds. Everybody's done. This yeah. is very good. But on the other side, we also see the Seeker Swarm, so they sleep after the Karen Swarm. Cool, on massive shelf and very big as well, bird alive. But we have FK for Kokoa now taking this protector, going towards the bottom line, looking at the keep wall, maybe even keep if they get it. Taking a lot of damage. Khan is in the back line, able to get his sleep out. Yeah. Into missing Brawler. There's the sleep yeah, coming in. Followed. Not able to catch anyone, and we have Leo on his own there. Is he? He's out. No, no. he's not. Liu going down first here. Keep in mind, Ming is the protector, so she does not get the resets. They cue the match there. There is the repulsion KTC. there, though, in case they want to force a pick. Oh. Combo from KDC barely misses there. And now we see the team in blue, FK Fukukoa, hitting this keep. Poking it down slowly but steady. Now they're falling back, looking at the fortification camp on the other side. I think they could have pushed in for a keep there, with uh, Ming potentially using a ult to force and engage. They had uh, most of their tools available, apart from Gust, but uh, it looks like they're setting up again now, they just wanted the item, to be sure. Oh no, they are backing Leo off. is also back now, so they are falling back, probably is looking towards the own fortification camp or the top siege camp. Like for now, they're starting off with their fortification camp. So that's uh, three items at least I can count. They're on. Blue team is down their own siege camp. Meanwhile, the red team also does theirs. They're now pushing the bottom wave a bit. So they're constant pressure on the keep. So, gaming in the room has to defend those minion waves, otherwise they will take some damage on this keep. Yes, yeah, so we're not now, we'll see Falstad go to top to uh, clear that siege. But uh, it looks like everyone's moving up there, apart from Malganis, who might be a bit late to it. Johanna just anchoring very nicely. And the support camp is back, will we see a fight over it? Iron skin used. There's a stun against Maganis, but there's also the silence in tomb against Thrall. Taking a lot of damage there from the Qs from KTC. Ooh, that was close. Lots of tools used both sides. Just the Sunder and uh, Wave of Force available. But uh, Carrion Swarm available still for the Malganis. There it comes out, but it's not fast enough. 
Morgana's first one to follow this is a reset for Li Ming and now she's looking at towards KTC. So it's the rest of FK for Kokoa. Okay, KC taking a lot of damage. Massive Traffic coming out. Moving away to Li Ming. Uh, so back. No resets for her. Well, Stukov. Stukov getting focused down there as well. Chase and focus. No. Oh, throw just surviving. Oh, that was close. There we see the cube from KTC just getting massive value, especially in this entomb at the yeah. start of the fight. It's not yeah, really doubled up as well with the shade. So, so much damage. Johanna getting very low as well. There's Silence, Silence Entomb. Big Gust. Sunder as well. And Trainer stays alive there. Ooh. Gaming in their rhythm, currently struggling to get those kills secured against Johanna and Troll. Yeah, and it's uh, it's really close. There's a, uh, there's only tiny, tiny bits of health left. Uh, Rhaegar, though, there, uh, I couldn't tell if it was the Storm Shield or the uh, Earth Earth Grasp, uh, Earth Shield even, that uh, saved it. There was just that little bit of shield on there, keeping her alive in that entomb. Then uh, the Gust and the Sunder as well, just to make sure nobody could get near uh, to kill that Johanna, putting them in a great position now. And uh, still retaining all their items as well, so they didn't uh, panic with the healing item. Oh no, sorry, they did, they picked up another one. Uh, ignore me. So, setting up and now. Scout it out. 5v5. Shade There's the tomb oh, against Thrall this time. He's able to walk out of it, and there's a big stun coming in from Jaina from the ultimate, and now. Fawcett going for KTC and gets him, but he falls in return, but this gives the Li Ming the reset and it looks like we have Stukov falling here. No, Ming goes down. Ming goes down, but the protector is taken for now for AFK for Kokoa. A big silence coming in. Raise our sidestep. Boss not able to sidestep this one, but he's still able to get out there. Just the Leo get going the down. Uh, now we've got Thrall and Jana in the protector so far. Two for two on both sides. I'd like to see them just run this in. So it's just uh, just Sylvanas who can put out a lot of damage. But uh, I think just need to go forwards with the wave. Got them going towards the core. Now, oh, Rega. Still quite low. They did not focus him so yet. They're still focusing the Protector who is about to go down. Orega on the core, they're looking to finish it out, but I'm not sure if they're able to. Sukov going down, but there's a double two-man rude and silence combo onto Frawl and Rega. Frawl, Rega going immediately down, Frawl going down as well, and now the combo. Against Janna, will she be enough to stay alive there? She does not have Instructable, and she's able to do it. It's pretty with those two <laughs> killer bolts coming in from the top lane. It's map number one going towards AFK for Kokoa. Oh. Yeah, um, that was uh, <clears throat> very clutch at the end. Uh, very nice call, though, just being able to uh, confirm that one. Uh, Li Ming getting out most of the damage uh, for the uh, blue team in that one, and Sylv putting out a load of damage for the red team. Uh, no deaths on Sylvanas as well. Sylvanas really able to deal a lot of damage, but also later on we saw how to that just doing more damage, but it was not enough time to catch up in those stats. Mm. Yeah, the um, the Johanna doing a really nice job. I think uh, protecting, I'd say, the majority of the backline and allowing those flanks to come through from the Falstad um, and the Thrall and the Ming at times, just being able to get that extra bit of damage onto the backline. Uh, Malganis uh, doing very well early and mid game, but uh, those couple of blow ups near the end uh, just a bit of a shame he couldn't get the uh, carrying swarm off in time. It could have been quite different team fights. It's also always a thing you have to watch out with heroes like Maganus. You need to get those stuff out. Like if, because if you do not, you do not get any use out of it. You just mm. saw this here, especially with the level 20 talent, then in they would have been able to change the fight in a completely different way just because of the the sleep. Stukov has an easy time combing one or two people if they're close towards each other. And getting this yeah. massive rude silence combo in. 
like the huge blow up um, that it seemed like they needed uh, a couple of times. I mean, it's almost a bit like Sound Barrier is carrying Swarm. You always want to be using it earlier just to make sure you get that value. Um, but very well played from both teams. Uh, let's have a look to see what's happening for the next game. And we will have Gaming in the River choosing first pick. Yeah, so it looks like uh, they've yet to decide the map on here as well. <clears throat> I say it was a Kakoa that picked Volskaya, and uh, it looked like it was something that they had practiced. Um, I like the use of the uh, Falstad Global on top of the Thrall off lane. Yeah, really seemed to uh, help them uh, keeping that advantage lead. Also, looking at the build of Falstad with Season Mark, we have a lot of damage against Leo and Manganis, and then. With the boomerang on level seven, he just makes sure to be able to clear those waves fast enough. And that extra bit of burst on him, yeah, and that uh, that was really good. Yeah, in the waves, and then uh, the extra burst as well onto the Malganis to confirm it, as opposed to the secret weapon. We've and got some spicy like stuff. Alteric. We've got some spicy stuff. S F K for Coca as gaming in the room and choice chooses first pick to deal with the map choice of for F K for Coca, and it will be Ultra Pass. So, I think that uh, Kakoa might opt for something similar <clears throat> on this, uh, as both maps are very large, uh, Ultrek being the largest map of any. Um, they might see a Falstad ban though. So he did, uh, did really well with the uh, isolation um, and disengages with the gusts. Although, alternatively, the Rhaegar um, might be denied as well, as uh, a lot of those Ancestrals and Clutch Heals were very strong, plus uh, all those dodges. Yes. So, it looks like we have the lobby up. And we'll have the teams joining soon. Yes. It also now shows to a correct score for FK for Coco, so it's no longer 15. Finally, <laughs> 1 0 so far. You just have to leap 5 there, really, don't you? Should be a bit easier. These two teams are at the top of Div 4, so it's actually more like Division 3, yeah, kinda. It sounds low, but I suspect these players are higher ranked. Yeah, the, like, you can compare Division 3, 4 with like Diamonds, with, if not even already Master players. And also, like, not, not like uh, solo queue stuff, but more like already team play things, which is the big difference. Yeah, it's um, it's it's at that point where you you find you can you can get some high plat all the way through to even low masters, really starting to coordinate much higher level play. Um, so you get a real mix of uh, like solo duo queue levels. Um, all the way through, but it's where you really start to develop like five man, five man styles, and it's where playing together over even just an entire season makes such a huge difference uh, in how clean your plays will be even just communication from uh, shot callers between everyone so it looks like our teams are ready as well or at least one of them is ready to go on please fix your mic i don't know what what is with my mic does it sound a bit of robotic again i'm not sure <clears throat> it doesn't sound anything for me i mean it, it might have cut out a bit if you were talking at some point it could also have been that the scene scene switch in this in in OBS it always like makes it a bit robotic. Bit of a delay. Yeah. <clears throat> now we've got both teams ready for the next game, and we see it starting. Ultra pass, as we said before. And just 
should be starting now. Hello? Yep, anytime now. Here we are. Here we go. It comes when you talk, yeah, it's because usually I'm not sitting as close to mic as I normally do when when we're in the main screen. Because that looks really weird in the in the in the cam. So first band's coming out, what are your predictions? I mean, I could see the chunk that Ben again is, it is very strong, also maybe Maganis is, he did a lot. He did, he did actually a lot. First of all, we're gonna start out with the chunk red from Gaming in the Room being banned out. Yeah, which, uh, not surprising you said, plus, uh, really good at delaying the objective here. Um, so, probably see, yeah, Alarak again, so, uh, mirrored from the first one. Again, two solid bands. Lots of chokes in here as well. Meaning that Alarak can get tons and tons of value. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned is uh, Abatha. Uh, will either team look to opt into that? I'm not so sure yeah. about that, to be fair. As Ultrak Pass is... You know it's a big map. It's like a map where you love to have five bodies in the early objectives already. Because if you give those up, you have a really hard time coming back into the mid and late game. Yeah, and, as, and it looks like it's just the exact same bands from yes, game one. Yes, and as in the last game, the betting is again set up, so bet A and the amount of points you want to bet on them. If you think if Kip Coca will close the series out, or explanation mark bet B if you think gaming in the rim is able to pull off a comeback. Yeah, and uh, Johanna picked up. Looks like they want to deny that. Uh, again, Johanna being a great opening pick as a tank. So not many real counters. And uh Boss that Regar. So again false at for FK for Coco gaining in the global. And then Regar with his camp clear on the ultra pass also very strong. Yeah, and the uh the build taken as well, just uh really allowing to get those waves cleared very quickly, although Will bribe give them as much value here? I think the split pushing potential might might actually be better. ETC off lane. It looks like uh, it. Also very good uh, deny to not give the opponent team the possibility to take ETC as the main tank as he and Jenna are currently the top tanks. And uh, with ETC as well uh, into a foul stat, uh, having two forms of delay against fly can. Uh, do quite a lot of work, especially with the stage dive then, so if you deny the false start as he's looking to fly in, either with the boop or the slide, then you stage dive in and uh, swap it over for a 5v4 while false start's waiting on his 10 second cooldown. And uh, Zul'jin being banned again, as per game 1 bans. But uh, it looks like a tank choke uh, from Gaming in the Rhythm, looking to really limit those tank options. This will mainly leave us up with Diablo, the main aggression tanks, Murden also still a possible, crack. Anoop, Stitches, Tyrell. I'd like seeing Anubrak here, I think. Lots of uh, deny and being able to get on the back line. But instead, we see Murden and Imperius. Imperius being one of the top off laners at the moment. And uh, Murden, very high health pool. And able just to jump in there. Might struggle to jump out though against an ETC and a Johanna and the KT, uh, KT stuns as well. But we'll see what the last two picks Murder are. Murder and Imperius. Gaming in the rhythm. I mean, with getting in the Murder and Imperius, they have a lot of damage on their team so far already. They're still missing like the main damage hitter, which could be a Ming again from Poppin or something along those lines. Uh, Hanzo Tarand coming out, so uh, plenty of CC coming out from Gaming the Rhythm. So a uh, bit of coordination there, and anyone will melt, including Muradin, especially with uh, Tarand's trait, Hunter's Mark, getting that minus 15 armor on. Yeah, last pick is here we go again with the Liming. Very strong pick. I mean, I think we have a DC with a stage left this game, just to counter the false at Global. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Uh, although we might see Johanna sitting in the offlane for a bit. 
especially after seven, depending on where the objective sets up, with uh, the old school ETC slide, Taran stun, KTZ, uh, KT burst, and a hands over there. Uh, Johanna at seven, having the, um, oh, not seven, sorry, 13, having the burning rage to assist with the wave clear, although her wave clear isn't too terrible by herself. Um, just going through a bit of mana, but uh, we'll see how they look to set up. We will see if they're able to catch out those members of AFK for Kokoa. On the Ming again, we see Poppin Fresh, who is most played here is actually Hanzo. He got picked away, then we see Junkrat, which is probably the ban. And then we also see Reyna picked a lot from him. Wouldn't the Haka be better? It's I'm not sure about that, to be fair, even though I'm a main Haka player myself. Just because of with this ETC pick in the soul lane for gaming in the room, they denied towards FK for Coco and this forced them into the uh, Murden. But anyways, let's start off with gaming in the room on the right side, trying to come back in this game number two. We've got Kvode on the Hanzo, Dexter on Turande, Haft playing the tank again on the Janna, forced it on the ETC and last one was least we've got friendly tank playing the Keltas, Keltas and on the left team for the blues stage today etc is kind of budget version of the hacker infiltration <laughs> they all have to use budget solutions these days i'm not sure about that anyways Looking at Talons, we see again an auto tech build at level 1 from Falstad. Oh, everything pretty standard, I would say. Yeah, everything pretty standard. In previous going for Burn the Impure, so the percentage damage to kill ETC and Janna faster than others. You will also probably see the giant killer from Falstad at some point. This will also help with killing those two tanks. Murden taking third win, so you can just go in, take some bit of damage, go out, and then be healed up again very fast. As we saw on the other map already, one minute timer hit, and both teams making their camps. Meanwhile, we see Hanzo still struggling down here with the wave clear compared to Falstad. As he is q and no explosive errors yet. Ah, I think I'm back now. Don't know what happened with Discord then. Can you hear uh, me? Yes, I can hear you now. Both could have been commentating there on that game. So, uh, where have we uh, here now? So, Hanzo and Falstad at the bottom. Camp pushing in for the red team. Marina taking a bit of damage, but that's what I said. He can just fall back. He taps for this now. But he just gets healed up by third wind again. So I like this push coming in from the uh, red team here. Just applying the extra pressure, trying to get that wall. But uh, not much left on the camp, so they are looking to back out now. ETC and Imperius just dancing around a bit at the top. Uh, Imperius running a bit low on mana though, so ETC doing a very good job there. I kind of like the explanation from you, Kambulu. For ETC it's better offensive, Darka is better offensive, yes, but also no, because Darka can just, with this tongue you can isolate one person very good, so... He's also having good tools, just harder to hit usually. But also he only hits one person, ETC with this power slide can hit more people. The team's already waiting at the siege camp again to take it immediately as soon as it respawns. Both teams are level 5? Gaming in a room a bit ahead in experience right now, but it's mainly because of this mid soak is not cleared yet. Ming again on level 4 with Trim Red, maybe opting towards the aura belt. Or as we saw last game with the usual calamity and stuff, just because of dominate. Uh, domination on level 4 is not as strong as it used to be. We, here we also yeah. see the next point. With Triumphorate, she can just stand here and poke this all the time. She gets in this cool reduction, Merlin not getting combo. 
taking a lot of damage, but he's able to jump out oh. for now. And yeah, he is fine. And now look at his health bar, as it should be just coming back up again with third wind. Like he would have, like it's like he has, he was not in the fight. Yeah. Have we see just Ming there. getting the poke? Oh, Ming, just away. Six stage. I mean, I'd like to see uh, Ming set up a bit more uh, in that corner there between the well and that wall, a bit safer. But uh, gets a bit of a heal there, and uh, Red have started the objective. Also, meanwhile, clearing the mid lane a bit. So it's a 5v4 more or less. Marin trying to come in there from the side. Power slide stun and death defense as well for him. So he should be fine. Stun against Kate Kalfas. 11 seconds on the objective. Gets interrupted once more from the Hanzo Sonic error. But Pierce is able to channel it through. Oh, and KT punished then. Not, just, not able to get away as fast as everyone else. Unfortunate, but he will be back in 15 seconds. We still have very slow uh, death timers. Confused newbie says ETC is always bad. He has a badass gu guitar that he uses to make music and help people with. The hacker has some claws in the tongue. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the style effect also matters. Keep that in mind. Oh, uh, he but in the he name, but is... he doesn't seem very elite there as he falls. Guitar just sitting near those minions. <laughs> That's the damage. Oh, Murin taking it, a lot uh, of damage. ETC will be back for an encore, Six... just surviving though. Murin staying alive, but there we see Ferdinand popping in. He is getting healed up fast again, but he has no mana. This is one of his biggest problems. But yeah, that's what we saw from FK for Kokoa. That's the thing with Imperius and Li Ming. You have a lot of damage. Pretty with this level 1 talent, Burning Pure. 2.5% for every mark on him, so up to 7.5, which is pretty crucial. It's not insignificant, especially with uh, Ming there. Just uh, looking to finish up whoever you might catch. But uh, we've seen with uh, Ming's level 4 talent, all those orbs just going out for free, orbs going out for the free poke. Oh. Is, it, is it full refund now on my A lot of jump? damage on Janna. Very low. Raise our Duke Master going in there as well and shooking to around this stun. Turan though doing a great job of keeping uh, Johanna alive. And then I'm now falling in the bot lane, meanwhile. Meanwhile, Falstad doing Falstad things. Yeah, and they're two sent there to deal with him. It looks like he's bugging out now. Yes, he is fine. Some of around the hits, but he's still able to get out there. Now we see the rest of FK for Kokoa going towards the top lane. Pressure being applied, but uh, will they get the minion wave in fast enough, or Rhaegar's going to start tanking shots? Fall well down. Rhaegar uses his. What's it called? We have Fast that already looking to uh, get that mid soak cleared up, just rotating straight to mid, and uh, tens were picked up in the midst of all of that. Uh, Playmaker coming from the Muradin. Ooh. Yeah, all those front walls taken down from AFK for Kakoa really gives them those experience they needed to get level 10. So also now coming yeah. in, we see Wave of Force just for healing Mighty Gust and have Omer and Playmaker, but there's the Sage on top of the point, and Fossil is there with the Gust. Get them out. Strong error on hitting uh, Imperius so far. Mm. I liked uh, Falstad's positioning there, just off the pad, knowing that as soon as ETC landed, uh, he wasn't going to do much. So just forcing him back immediately with the gust. Uh, very, very well played on that. Uh, Ten's also now picked up as well for the red team, as we saw with the uh, immediate stage dive in. Uh, again, pretty much what you'd expect from everyone. Meanwhile, top boss pushing half of the fort down. Objective is about to spawn, but we also see FK for Kokoa going towards the bottom boss. I'll scout it out, so. Uh, there's no gust for 10 seconds, but there Gaming? isn't stage dive for 20 seconds. In the river, Gnosis. Knows that they are here, but. Gust back in 5. Should be able to get this one. Yeah, Gust is back up, and Gaming in the room do not want to engage so far. One level lead as well for now for FK for Kokoa. 
Uh, one thing worth noticing as well is that uh, KT has opted for the uh, Sun King's Fury, so that uh, extra bomb damage on spread, rather than the living flesh, uh, rather than the burning flesh, for his uh, flame strike for two targets, uh, additional health. But uh, ETC looking for a flank, and Imperius just saying no. Phoenix used, nice bit of zoning tool. Bottom boss meanwhile took out the fort and is now going for the fountain. Bring the arrow, arrow coming in. in. Haymaker, Haymaker the Jenna out of it, so she is not able to escape, uh, to engage, sorry. Yeah, and that's a great trade, uh, Haymaker only being 40 second cooldown and Arrow being 70, I think, yeah. Yeah, but now we see force now. Fight coming in, there's the Ancestral Healing, Gust coming in, sure, no, it's in a lot of danger. Yeah. Sun coming uh, in from the Pierce. All now used there. Pierce on a good spot, ETC there's the falling. Spread. The bomb spread onto Li Ming just makes a half health. And Tarant falling down, make Four it two, make it three, make it four, only hands alive, and he will stay alive. Yeah, and now this huge wave pushing in bottom, a huge wave in top. Imperius already moving, and it uh, looks like this should be bottom keep as well. You always want oh, to get all the stuff to defense. I always want to get all the soak on this map when those riders coming down the lanes. The bottom towers taken down. We see Imperius just going up there just to collect that soak. Uh, just kind of interrupting the ETC a bit. Faust had gone to mid. Looks like they're not going to quite push in for the keep there. Just opting for the full outer wall, maximizing the experience, and uh, on their way to 16. But right now, objective is, is still pushing in. Stage dive down. Oh, Murray going down there. Dead was it? Three, three, from the hands three four. Yes, it is Looks a best like of three. Looks like they're just happy to uh, take the kill back out and uh, look to reset. I'm not sure why Murin was so far in there. Like, they were one person down. That's really a lot of worth going in there. It's only a 4v3 flat, or 3v4. Here we see both siege camps about to be taken again, as usual, on this map. Yeah, and we see the, uh, the fission bomb picked up from uh, KT. Looks like they might be trying to synergize a bit with the Johanna, uh, the stage dive, and the um, Hanzo arrow. Just get everyone clumped up and uh, get those bombs out to really maximize the damage there, which uh, in these chokes can uh, do quite a lot of work. Yeah, it definitely can. Also safely soaking bottom, which is looking at top soak. Jenna looking faster, the faster is just fine down there. Looking at it's the like stones, everything pretty standard I would say. ETC might get caught, can he get away? Interrupted and he's down. Falstad flying up as well just in case to confirm. This uh, should be boss taken now. Yes, boss just Very unfortunate spawn. timing. Boss also just he respawned, so... Out. And he will have the stage dive back. Yeah, only a short cooldown up there. But there's still fast enough with this boss. Bottom boss, back up in 40 seconds. Yeah, but... Worth to go down, immediately down there. Only 5 seconds back for ETC, so... If they get the wave pushed out, maybe let the boss push in a bit. Uh, and then look to take a free objective, I would think. Moradin doing a nice scout on the camp. Also have Imperius in the meanwhile going for E build with the armor for himself on level 4, on level 13, the reduced skull on level 16, the reduced armor for others. Mm. Lose one of those brands. The same period, not opting for the blink as well, just rather wanted to make sure that he stays alive in those fights.
Merlin taking a lot of damage. They're also dead. Thingy coming out. Big Owl. Phoenix in. Mosh Pit. Stoning. Making a banner really stoned out there, being alone. Stun coming in, and that's the first kill. Will they get anything out of the reset? And Tron's on a good spot. That is oh. the second kill, and now will they go for a third? Maybe. Oh, oh Rega oh, taking a lot of trouble. damage. No, I just sides everything again. Well done. Race. And uh, objective now, Falstad already looking to push bottom in. Uh, I think we see two keeps here. Yeah, I think so as well. The problem on this Maybe map always is if you only have one keep down, the object or the core has 40 armor, so it's really hard to take him down. And if you're yeah. not able to take him down immediately, he will just regenerate this health, and this would be very annoying. Yeah, it is always a two keep map, uh, unless you've got very specific ways of dealing with it. So, like a like having like a four man white or even a Falstad wind tunnel at a later level. We'll engage on Tamura then. Oh, There's great the cleanse. cleanse there. And he jumps away quite nicely. Uh, Core now starting to take some damage. But he should be fine. Top keep is going down, so did the bottom one. And now, they're setting up for bottom boss. FK for Kokoa looking towards bottom. Bottom boss now taking quite some damage. Jen and everyone from the red team gaming in the room is coming in now. There's the owl, so we should see the stage dive soon. Yeah, yeah stage dive on, on the, the side, back line. Though. Stage dive on the back line, Murden. Isolating yeah, the Tyrande. Oh, Tyrande getting low. Sorry for those legs. Huge arrow. Big ancestral. Oh, looks like uh, KT's gonna fall as well. Another kill, and that could be game. Yeah. Three kills for FK for Kokora. Make it four as Jen also goes down. Now Hanzo is on the run. There's 90% slow from the level 20 totem. A level 60 totem, and there's a nice wave of force to stop him from jumping over this wall. And this will be game number two. Probably. Yes, we have 10 seconds on ETC and another 10 on Tyrande. That's yeah, a big wave in there. I don't even think ETC can say that. The GG's have been called. Yeah. There comes the GG's. Rega going down though. But it's still keep the four core going down. It's game number two. Going over towards FK for Kakoa. Fifteen zero as predicted. <laughs> it's not a prediction, buddy. Not a prediction. This will leave us with next game, which will be between Dive or Delete against Jane and the Frost Mage. As far as I remember. Yeah, I think that's what we had next. Do, do, do. Yep, that's why I have here. So let's have a look to see how we're setting up for them. Set up everything shortly.